Good morning, everybody. It's a fantastic morning this morning. We've got some fog lying in all the lowlands around the Malvern Hills and British Camp. I've been here quite a few times before, but I had to come out today. We've got Breeden Hill in the distance, that's poking out, and then a few other hills just poking out as well. Now, towards the west, there is less fog, but there is still a little about in the valleys further west. Should be able to get some great photos today. Hoping for a nice wide of the Malvern Hills as the sun comes up and hits it. Then I'm probably going to get my long lens out and photograph some of the hills that are poking out of the fog. Then you've got this wispy edge to the fog down here as well. So there's lots to photograph. I just hope it doesn't burn off too quickly. My first composition is going to be a very obvious one. It's this path going down towards the Malvern Hills. It's a really nice leading line into the shot. I've got the Malverns in the background. Now this is where you've got to act quickly. The clouds have gone really pink and it looks fantastic. So hopefully I can get this before that goes. Probably should have been faffing around a little bit less. <laughs> Let's go vertical. It's gone super pink over here, but not quite up here yet. But I'm going to take a shot anyway. My 15mm is a manual focus lens. So here we go, f11, gonna focus. Where are we at with that? That's okay. Just to be on the safe side, I am bracketing. Those pink clouds above are really nice. Give a nice bit of color and detail in the sky. Let's have a look at that. Come on. Ooh, yeah. So I'm just trying to improve on that composition by wandering around and moving my camera until I get it where I want it. Now, when the sky does go pink like this, you do have to act quickly because that pink area will just drift through the sky quite quickly. But it's fantastic that I've got this line coming down. And I've got the Malvern Hills coming in, so it's like they're kind of matching each other. Now, the one thing I wanted to talk about today was something I've been thinking about for a while, and it's about photography. You see so many videos online all about gear, and let's be honest, I do love my gear. I've got these two cameras, I've got another camera in my bag, I've got a handful of lenses. There's so much to do with gear, there's so much to do with, well, if I get this camera or this lens, I'll be a better photographer. But I was thinking that there's something about photography that's much more than this. But first, I wanna grab a few shots of all these things with a longer lens. And by longer lens, I cheat a little bit, I've got my RX10, which is another camera. <laughs> probably should have grabbed my tripod then. <laughs> so I'll grab my tripod and go instead. So I put the RX10 on, which has that 24 to 600 full frame range. And this is a great camera for just picking out little bits. What I'll do is I'll press record. So I'm recording on this to show you what I mean. Now there are these hills all in a row. We've got the fog in between them. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm probably gonna shoot them with a vertical frame. Yeah, that looks much better. Ooh, yeah, that looks good. So I've got this hill just in the foreground. Then I've got those in the background. I might shift over a little bit to try and get those trees in. But that looks pretty cool. Now I do keep going on about the RX, but it is a fantastic camera. The reason for that is, I was just shooting something at probably around about four or 500 mil, and then I can zoom all the way out to 24 mil, whip it around and get a shot very, very quickly. So even though the sensor is tiny, the versatility of this camera is just ridiculous. Nowadays as well with bracketing, which is what I've just done there, you can increase the dynamic range of the shots. Let's say you've got a camera that doesn't have a really wide dynamic range. You can take a load of shots, stack them all together in Lightroom or whatever program that you use. This increases the dynamic range of your camera, basically. So with this RX10, I can go from a really close up to quite a wide shot. And if it's not wide enough, I can also do a pano stitch. Nowadays, this camera gives me almost everything that I need. And if I didn't do this for a job, I would probably just have this as my one camera. I'd probably go for the Mark IV though, because the focusing on the Mark III is pretty rubbish. So I'm trying to focus on the hill over there, over on Breeden Hill. It's really not focusing. So 
and I'm not shy either while taking photographs. I'll take loads. You get these people who say, oh, you should only take a few photographs, but bugger that. With the size of uh, memory cards these days, you can take as many as you want. Yay, focus this time. And the sun's just poking out. So that 600 mil, gonna get a shot of that. Now I mentioned it a bit earlier about photography being gear centric. I came up with this idea that it's not really about the gear, it's about you. It's about how you use that kit. No matter what kit you have, no matter whether it's a camera phone or whether it's the best camera in the world, it's up to you how you use that kit. You could have, say, a 1DX Mark III, a Sony A1, or anything like that. If you don't use it, you're not gonna get any decent shots with it. Whereas you could have a camera phone and go for a walk every morning and get some amazing photographs with it. So it's more about you and who you are as opposed to what kit you have. So the sunlight's just starting to hit some of the hills in the distance. And hopefully it'll start catching this as well. It's a fantastic morning. Now I'm gonna get a few of these little hills just as the sun catches those and see what else we can get with the big zoom range that I've got. Now you're probably thinking, ah, it's all right for you, Mike, you've got all of this kit already. But if I didn't, and if I had just a kit lens and a camera, you can still go out and get some fantastic shots. And like I said before, if you've even just got a camera phone, you can go out and get some shots. But the main thing is just to keep going out and keep using your camera, no matter what kit you have. Oh, come on, focus. Focus, are you gonna focus? No. Uh, I really need to get the Mark IV, or they really need to update this and give us a Mark V. Yes, got that one. Here we go. Here we go, here we go. Now, if you did just have a kit lens, it'd be a little bit harder to do this. But there are quite a few options out there where you can get quite cheap zooms. And I'm gonna do a video about that soon. So if you'd like to see that, comment down below and let me know. I have been looking at a few really cheap zoom options. Some are manual focus, some are autofocus, but there are a lot out there. And even if you've got quite a small budget, you can still get a nice decent telephoto lens and a nice wide angle lens as well. Now, even though photography is my job, I do just love going out and shooting. And I do it for the love of it. I do it for the craft of photography, going out and getting behind my camera to take those photographs. If you're very gear centric and you're trying to buy the latest and greatest things, you're kind of missing the point. This will help your photography just ever so slightly, but if you don't get out and use it on a regular basis, you're not gonna get better. If you get out and shoot and get out and shoot as much as possible, whenever you can, get out the weekends, get out when the weather's bad, get out when the weather's good, you'll get better and you'll start to take some fantastic photographs. Come on, focus. why are you not focusing properly? Right there. Basically, you just need to get out and shoot. And I'll keep going on about this on my channel. The only true way to get better as a photographer is to keep going out on a regular basis with your kit, taking photographs, getting used to your camera, getting used to the settings, and taking better photographs. Where are you? There we go. Ooh, battery's running low. Let's see if I can get another one before the battery runs out. Sometimes when I go out, I'll completely mess up my settings, I'll get the camera soaked, or I'll just mess up in one way or another. But it's more about those experiences than about what kit I have. I actually saw a stat the other day that Ansel Adams took around about 12 portfolio worthy photographs every year. So don't worry if you're not getting an amazing shot every single time. Sometimes the conditions will be rubbish, Sometimes you just won't be feeling it. And other times things just don't come together. And this is okay. Just go out and take photographs knowing that it's a long process. You will learn year after year and you will get better.